back to the bathroom, shave it off. I'm not shaving it off. It's my hunting look. Hunts of guys around here hunt for their livelihood. You're not from here, Joe. Can I borrow your, your rifle? Do you need ammo? No, I bought some. Sorry. If you just wait till next week, I can go. Thanks again. I'm the mustache man. I'll catch it, I'll kill it any way I can. The whole point, this was I could take care of my family. My wife didn't even want me to come out here today. I'm just saying, it seems like the whole world's falling apart. <laughs> come on, Joe. These things happened. <laughs> You have to tell me what happened. All right, cool. Yeah. cool. Wow. What? That's a lot of instruments behind. Oh, <laughs> this is my. Uh, this is wow. my my, uh, my okay. studio. Studio. It's, wow, right. that's impressive. Wow. You only got a Hammond B there. <laughs> well, so you got a Hammond B. I've got my Leslie in, in the cabinet. I've got a, um, a um, continuo organ, which is like a little pipe, uh, um, a pipe organ. I've got a choir loft up there. Mm -hmm. I then, got a choir loft too. So, you know, hot shot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, I just yeah. mostly just put speakers. I'm, I'll put speakers up there to, to uh, preamp wow. stuff. And then I got... Little octagon and wow! Is, where are you? Where is the studio? Um, I'm just north of San Francisco. I'm in. Um, uh, do you know where uh, Sonoma County is? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm in Petaluma, which is just on yeah. the other side of the 101 from Sonoma. Oh, very nice. Okay. Well, it's great meeting you. You got we got a Robert Machoyan here back for his 25th appearance on film. <laughs> oh, amazing! Oh. Gosh. And just like ever, like he's just got just the, the salt and pepper. It's the perfectly seasoned. <laughs> it's like he's got the, the perfect yeah. umami on that beard. Yeah. Uh, it's And then Peter Albertson. Did I get Hello. the, did I, from all the way from Copenhagen? How do you say? Copenhagen? Yeah, uh, I live in Copenhagen right now. I'm very close to... Will actually, I'm at Skywalker Ranch. Oh, you're you're here. That's right. In Nicasio. Yeah. Uh, so you're not in Copenhagen. No. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, just uh, just delete your. No, I'm kidding. So uh, <laughs> no, I'm happy to have you either you know in, in Denmark or here. Absolutely, it's great meeting you too. My girlfriend's Danish, so I. My girlfriend is Danish, so I oh. you know she was very excited to know that I was bringing on one of her. Although she lives, she lived here for decades now. So, okay. but she's just getting her citizenship just now. Wow! Oh, well. Congratulations. Ah, congrats. Why now? I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> like tradesies, tradesies. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to scheme with uh, scheme enough ways. Uh, hopefully, Peter gets, uh, um, he, Peter gets knighted. And he can get me an in to come live in uh, Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for all, all kind of coordinating. And thank you to Laura, of course, Huberton, who is a friend of everybody. And, uh, you know, Truly, and Robert, yeah, you've, what's, and Robert, you've, you've, you've uh, collaborated with her, right? She was uh, yeah. working with you on uh, Killing of Two Lovers. And she probably, worked. She worked on Joseph Chambers and then God Bless Her Child and uh, When She Runs, which is where Peter and I first met. It's amazing. 
Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm very, very happy that we're all meeting. Um, at, you know, it's, I always enjoy these and it's, I, I like doing it kind of on the later side, you know, <laughs> anything goes right. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what that would include exactly, but it's nice to see everybody. So, uh, all right. So let's just, uh, get out of the way here. Peter, you are, again, you're in, uh, Luke, at, Luke, uh, at Skywalker Ranch. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. you're the sound, shall we say, how should we uh, uh, identify you today as the sound designer on this film? Yeah, I'm Does the sound Does that work? Designer. Yeah. And, and then, the and Will, you, of course, are the composer. Yes. And Robert, you... Wrote and directed. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the mastermind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robert, I just, uh, it's so glad that, uh, you know, uh, that, our uh, paths keep uh, converging like this. It's really, uh, it's nice. I, I yeah. appreciate it. And, and I'm just, a, you know, and thoroughly enjoy seeing the films. Um, I, I'm especially fond of the musical numbers and the dancing. It's great. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, I kid because this is a, another fairly intense drum, drama. Let's set it up a little bit. So, well, people have seen the trailer, so we don't need to set it up, actually. In fact, yeah. I just pissed Will off. He's leaving. So... No, 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 no. <laughs> My lighting is terrible, so... No, it's okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. Anyhow, so, okay, so let's talk about, since we, we got two guys here that really... I was, you know, I realized very early on that this is a guy who has a very... The, the lead character, what's his name? Uh, Joe. Joe, yeah, played by Clayne Crawford, who was on last time, right, Rob, uh, Robert, with you for The Killing of Two Lovers. He's back. Um, and he is a guy with a very rich internal fantasy life. Like, you know, he's going off into the woods by himself. He has no business doing that because he's, you know, he has this concept, right, of, of like himself, what he wants him to, to how he wants to per, like perceive himself. Uh, which is of, of a guy who can, you know, take care of his family by going out into the wild and foraging and bringing back, you know, a carcass of food for the, you know, right, for yeah. to feed his family in case, you know, we go into, uh, you know, this apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic uh, nightmare. So anyway, uh, he goes off into the woods and then, you know, we don't want to give too much away, but then something <laughs> unexpected occurs. Let's put it that way right which puts him to the test um and um but right as soon as he steps into the woods you guys are 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 are, are uh now l l layering this film uh with you know I, what what was the approach what were the when did you arrive at this concept of kind of we we kind of hear his, inside his head a bit um and and you know and then there's also other things going on in terms of the sound design and the soundtrack but can you can you kind of talk about how you guys arrived at the decision to go this way with the sound design and i don't know uh, why don't peter why don't you start <laughs> good next well, it all starts with the director you know so it's, uh, I mean, Robert and I have been like collaborating on, like this is our third feature together. Um, and we've been like for every movie been diving deeper and deeper into how you can use sound to describe not mm -hmm. just an externalized environment but like really an internalized environment how do you use sound as a emotional storyteller to describe character and describe feelings inside of the character and uh, the killing of two lovers the previous film was done without a score and i remember Robert saying from the beginning of this, the, the process for the integrity of Joseph Chambers that um, now we should use score, but really explore like how can sound and music like melt together and become one? Because what we would like to avoid is this feeling of like having music that just like dictates what you have right. to feel at every point in the story. 
this mm. a movie that is very much about um, things you cannot see in a way. And um, I, in that regard, like sound and music plays an enormous role in that. Um, but Robert was really from the very beginning uh, talking about this concept of like having sound and music meet. And uh, we did that also in Killing of Two Lovers by having no music at all. Mm -hmm. And this. Why uh, were you hired for that movie then? I don't understand. What, what <laughs> then I saw the film with if sound. They design, didn't, if we, they didn't. Well, sorry. I, we, 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 we've used sound design to kind of describe the what music usually describes which is yeah the emotional state of the character and on this film will and i who've been working together on what is this our fifth film together or something like that will uh we know each other very well by now mm -hmm. so from the very beginning it was really about like collaborating very very closely so yeah that was that was kind of the beginning of this process that's great um hey, um robert were you were you also kind of consciously trying to go in an opposite way from the killing of two lovers then i mean do we... yeah in many ways with the killing of two lovers it was grounding even though we were using these kind of one of the things that Peter kind of talked about early on with that film was like, these are all the sounds in David's, I mean, yeah, David's life. So we pulled everything from like what his job and his family and the, the doors and so forth. And, and Joseph Chambers were like, let's, let's begin to venture into the sur surrealist aspects of our lives, you know, like the, the voices in our head or, or the people in our head and, the, and these sounds specifically that we kind of invent. And one of the scenes like specifically um, that was really exciting to me anyways, as we were working on this was when he's hiding in the woods waiting for the deer and you get this like epic sounds. And to me, that's all just in his head. I'm in the woods, I'm behind a tree, I'm hidden. And it's like, he's pulling <laughs> yeah. Rambo sounds and he's pulling like every kind of macho kind of element that he's like experienced in his life, he pulls it in. And so I love how we're dealing with like creatures and we're dealing with score and he just feels like he's, he's you know, doing this thing. And, right. and, and he, yeah, you almost yeah, get the sense and, that, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, so we push in and, and from a f directing standpoint, it was such a great, like, let's do this in real time so that when he gets up and he gets pissed and he kicks the branch and he walks off, you're like, okay, he's been there for like a minute, guys, like, <laughs> which like, you know, really speaks to him and this idea of not even kind of being a hunter, you know. Yeah, you almost get a sense that he just wasn't brought up, like, he feels like you know, if, uh, maybe nobody taught him how to be a man, you know, so he gets these ideas from, you know, popular culture or, you know, it's, uh, that of what it is to be a man, you know, and he just doesn't have the slightest clue. Um, you know, the, the film, you know, could venture into, you know, uh, sort of a silliness, I mean, or, you know, laughs because he's really is, you know, kind of goofy at times. Um, but we know that he's in danger some, some way. The tension is building. How? Through the sound design, through the composition. We know that things, so it keeps us kind of balanced, you know, like we know it's not a comedy. Without that, those sound design, it, we, we might think this is a comedy. So that's how powerful those elements are, you know? Yeah, I, I think it was really important that there's this comedic, comedic element in it so that we get we get the type of person that he is you know living in utah and in this region i i know a lot of people that are hunters and survivalists and they take what they do very serious and they do know yeah. that you could sit them in a chair for three hours and they know like actually you sit here and part of this is, is sitting here and so i didn't want it wasn't like i wanted to tell a story about those guys mm -hmm. i wanted to tell a story about like this these these hobbyists or these people that like almost 
take in, come into these cultures just all of a sudden and, and see the superficial element and live the superficial element. So, so elements of humor were important to be like, this is an idiot. This is not a, a, a serious, somebody who's taking this serious at all. And one of the things I liked that that Klein had said early on when we started to uh, discuss his character, he was like, I'm actually the monster. I'm like the monster wandering around in the, in the woods because I'm the dangerous thing. And I liked right. that. I, I really liked that he approached it that way. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, talking about comedy and drama, like I, I think for, for the sound and music in this film that if we really go all the way from like at some points it's really funny like you have like the 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 baseball crowd scene or the right the horse in the in the forest coming up like if he was like you you're in his head and kind of getting this bizarre kind of delusion of like there's a there's people out there who love me <laughs> and then and he's but he's also like a 10 year old kid you know <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. and then on the like on the total opposite side is like some extremely dramatic very very intense very distressing sounds in other parts of the movie so i think we have like an amazing dynamic in this film which gives it like such an like a big emotional scope even though it's just one location, one man, pretty much all the time, it's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we we there's a, there's these incredible dynamics which I really love. It will. So it's, uh, tell me how you arrived at your at, at kind of your choices, compositional choices. I mean, uh, I I think it has to be said that like uh -huh. when Robert got us this cut so like we 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 connected on the on the film i mean he and yvette edited this amazing film with n no music and no you know nothing other than just like nat nat sound that they they uh got from the shooting so um literally literally it was this <clears throat> you know like P we we peter and i watched the film you know no music no sound it's just like holy Shit, this could we could just like the possibilities because I mean you know Klein's performance is amazing you know and he does inherent in his you know body language and the way that that Robert was able to <laughs> capture him in in uh, this space oh my gosh it just like it felt like you, we could build a whole ecosystem around him and have mm -hmm. at our, our at our fingertips, the, the ability to, um, you know, I think one conversation that we had early on, it's like violence, chaos, destruction, birth, life, death, it happens and life moves on. It's like this, the, you know, volley of man entering into this, this space. It's like his fear, his concern, the feeling that his life is is falling apart, it falls on deaf ears. Almost like it's like the the forest is not sympathetic to mm -hmm. it. So playing with with uh, just exploring different ways that, um, well, like we could have this sound that you know maybe I I built a whole orchestra for something that Peter just panned off into the distance like it's uh, like it's cicadas. But it's like, you know, I put the amount of time into it that I would put into an orchestral cue for a dramatic film. But be, by being willing to experiment with um, how we wait and how we place these things, um, it just re it really felt like, uh, just like exciting, exciting and intentional subversion of, of what our roles were as sonic storytellers. And that's like all credit to just that Robert trusted us to watch this thing with no preconceived notion of what it would sound like in the end. And that was so exciting and, and innovating for, for Peter and I to mm -hmm. really feel free to experiment. Yeah, one of, one of the funny things, uh, Adam, right before I, 
we, we started in on this, I, I had revisited that Sydney Sydney Lament book, uh, you know, making movies. Uh, yeah, making movies. <laughs> and he tells specifically this story about this composer. And I think it's a uh I can't remember which one it is, if it's Dog Day Afternoon or the uh, Serpico, but but anyways, they go to this, the composer did all this work and he just didn't feel it was right that the film had to be more silent. And so he cuts all the stuff out and they do a screening with the composer. And he says in there. He got up and walked out, and I never saw him again. <laughs> and I, was, <laughs> I was so uh, excited to to ask Will to be involved, partly because I knew he would be okay with with things just going out the window. And the other thing I really love that that he brought as well that's that's really important for me is the use of traditional and non traditional instruments mm -hmm. and, and the will uh, the ability to kind of break away. So we we have in the film like the beginning we have these birds which are real birds that eventually are not anymore they're violins and their other instruments that will kind of brought into it and wow. there's elements that we know that like okay the audience isn't like the three of us could geek out for hours on like <laughs> the, 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 the levels but but there's a belief that like whether it's conscious or subconscious it impacts the, the viewer experience regardless and that was one of the really exciting things with with will um and asking him to be involved is that ability to not be precious even though a lot of time went into something um and uh, i'm like that as well uh, of course as I, director was I, mean, I feel like that's the most beautiful thing about like well, i mean I, I see this in robert's writing in his direction it's like you can achieve this potency through minimalism because there's this it, it just feels like there's this heft and backstory and presence that that is off of the screen it's like you, you um there is um a certain like robust like we were seeing this small little sliver of passage of time this tiny you know little fragment of a story but in all of robert's films it just feels like you feel the transmission of so much history and so like with this film I just was the media was like, all right, I'm going to do this, but there is absolutely no nickel and diming this. It's like, I am not treating this just as like, I'm going to score to the picture. And that's what it is. I like, I wanted to make 20, 30 times more music than what we were going to use. Because if it's like, you know, um, Peter had got, shared this library with me. Um, uh, it's, is uh, uh, Thomas Beverly Rex? Is that was his Tom name? Tom Beverly, yeah. Yeah, Tom Rex Bell, Beverly, and it just like the most incredible library of of uh, sound recordings of different birds, different winds, like uh, cactus needles <laughs> being bowed, all of the just like um, really oh, yeah. rich, interesting bird song. So I just used this. So I was like, okay, I'm going to think of every conceivable way that I can either you know mimic these sounds or take the pursuit of these sounds and weave it into a yarn. And like, you know, if the compositions never get used, that's gonna be um, muscle memory for me to be able to tap into that kind of approach. So when it comes to like, you know, I've made this like overabundance of music to kind of pull from because it's just like, I just so inherently trust Peter's, <laughs> you know, ability to spatialize and manipulate you know, sound sounds that I make. And then when it came time to actually like playing live to stuff, it's like, you know, uh, um, uh, Peter would have this like bed that he, uh, you know, combining sound effects, sound design, nat sound, and just like be this kind of rollicking thing. I then had under my fingers this way to be able to play these things because I had built up this body of work. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't used, if I wanted to like, okay, I listened to enough footsteps of Klain walking through the woods that it's like, I can make this kind of crunching sound. It's like, if I put, um, you know, butcher paper on a snare drum and use these kind of brushes, that sounds good with his footsteps because I've, I've built all these pieces. So when it comes to playing to something live to like, I'm, I'm watching the picture, I've, I've got that technique, that kind of extended preparation of, of an instrument at my fingertips now because I've lived it. 
uh, and that was just like a totally invaluable uh, thing. So yeah, not being precious about it was was huge, but also being like, this is going to be so enriching for my person to <laughs> just like, you know, you don't get an experience to work on a film like this with a director like Robert very often. Most people never do, you mm -hmm. know, where there's that much trust and uh, freedom, that freedom, much freedom. open mindedness. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Go so wait, when, Robert, when you were shooting in the woods, and th thanks, Will. Robert, when you were shooting in the in the woods, so you what? How did you what? What did you you had? There was lots of noise going on too, so that had, had to be a challenge in of itself. So do, what? It, first, you have to kind of uh, first you have to edit the existing sound, right? Uh, <laughs> and then, I, I, what was that like? That process? Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's really tricky. I mean, it, it's it's a really awesome experience, but but it's a learning process as well. If I go back to like when she runs, for example, we held this shot for like forty five seconds in, in the film. That later, when Peter went through and did the sound design for it, felt too short. And it was the first time that I really learned like, okay, I got to start thinking about timing as well with these shots as it relates. So yeah, it's this matter of like thinking about what the actions are within it, how long that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And then this kind of fantasy idea of what the sounds will be. And, and some of it is, is grabbing at the real sounds, but <laughs> the place that we were shooting at was literally, uh, I don't know, three or four acres from a, a raceway. Mm. So there's part through the process of shooting, there's this meow, meow, meow. So it was actually, you, there was a race going on. You so there were these races going on and some of, some of what was beneficial that I think that happened on the weekends, but it happened like very early on where it almost just eradicated my ability to think about, oh, we will use these sounds. It's, it was almost like all sound will be removed outside of Klein's dialogue and everything else will have to be built from the ground up. Right. Um, and, and Peter's got a pretty great team um, of people that we've worked with as well that do that to where I've never been more comfortable dropping everything except for the the vocal audio and building from there. It's it's pretty neat. Yeah, so everything is built up. What you hear in the film, like yeah. claim, claims claims words are left, but and breathings and so on, but everything else is created afterwards. Um, so. Uh, just coming just two steps back regarding that whole sound and music approach. I mean, just to say that often, quite often on movies, the composers over here writing music, the sound department is over here building some sounds. Mm -hmm. Then at one point you have to mix the film and they, these two worlds meet and they try to kind of negotiate something that ends up being the movie. So what happened here was that from the very beginning, like Will and I were like this and constantly working together that, I mean, Will sending things to me that I edited, worked with, this, did sounds around, cut around, like sometimes just taking small fragments of a composition, using that for the sound of a footstep or, uh, the sound of a branch or uh, taking a little uh, melodic line or something, then sending that to Will, who then starts building, sculpting musical sounds based on what he hears that I've done. Mm -hmm. Did that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I think five times during the process or something like that. So, I mean, at the end of the, like, at the end of the process, during the mix of the film, there were several places where for me, like it was really hard to hear who had done what. Because mm. <laughs> it was really like sound and music just going together like that. And I remember like my mixing partner on the film, Dave Barber, like I think like for five, six, seven times, like I asked him, like played him a sound and said, look, so is this music or is this sound design? Mm. And every time he answered, the, he gave the wrong answer. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't throw Dave under the bus. <laughs> no, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus, David. They did an amazing job on this I, film. But it's just to say, so good. I mean, that that is really <laughs> a rarity. And that is something that has like happened on this film because Robert, as a director from the very get-go, said this is how it should be. This is the vision for this film. And then there was an openness from everybody to kind of collaborate this way, which is incredible. Um, we should mention the integrity of Joseph Chambers. Uh, uh, is, had it, is this a world premiere? Yeah, at its world premiere at Tribeca. The Tribeca Film Festival. There's still, as we speak, one last in-person screening. It's actually tomorrow. Yeah. Um, at Friday, uh, the 17th of June at 5 p.m. at Village East Cinema. And if you have an at home uh, badge or at home access, you can watch it probably for a number of more days through the festival. Um, I'm just really, yeah, I was really just glad. I wonder if people have you have yet, you, you, well, Robert, you're, or you're, are you in New York City? No, no, I'm, I'm here in Utah. Oh, so you didn't get to go to the festival? No, I didn't. Okay. And, and um, so, because I was going to say, I was just wondering what, if people in the audience, if they appreciate, <laughs> are there Q and A's? Is there anybody representing? Yeah, Klein's out there. There's a couple Q and A's. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, he's been able to talk about the film. I've read a couple, um, you know, post comments on the sound, uh, which is great. And great. People are kind of understanding it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but grateful for this opportunity because I, I I think there's really, for me, there's this way of like, uh, how can we push sound even farther? Right. You know, it really bothered me. Walter Murch has this kind of, you know, hierarchy of editing. And, and, and you know, it goes very much like get in the performance. You can't get in the performance, get in at the editing, can't get in the edit. And it's like, try and get in the sound design, can't get in the sound, then try and get it with the music. Mm -hmm. And I don't like, I really, when I read that, I was like, why are we, a little bit. Why are, yeah, why are we pushing things, you know, at that level as if this is the way to save a movie? Mm -hmm. I really think that the, like what, what should be happening is the, exactly what we attempted on this film, which is like con continuing the collaboration from the get go. I mean, I, I, the earlier I can be talking to Peter about a project and even Will about a project, the better, because then you're thinking about, you know, what sound can be happening as scenes are happening. You know, I mean, Francis for Copa played audio, uh, you know, when he was, um, why am I drawing a blank? The Gene Hackman film. Wait, what, which one, what was the- conversation. The conversation. conversation. Yeah, the conversation. I mean, he was playing the sound so that, so that Gene Hackman would, body movement would move to the, the, to the sound, which eventually would be the score. And I'm like, that's, that's great. That's a great thing as well. So I'm like, I, I, there's so much we can do with sound that's untapped and we're, we're going with the Dolby Atmos. You know, we're like trying to push the user experience in, in the theater. One of the ways to do it is yeah. push sound. Yeah, well, this movie, I, it's, very, it's a great point. I mean, this movie really would, you got to see it in a movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll get back together for that, but when that happens, is is there? And I guess you guys are you're in the uh, process of of working that out. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're, we're looking for a sale, a distributor right now. So right. Hopefully, good yeah. things. Uh, well, you know, Film Wax will always distribute any of your films. Just as if you know, <laughs> just in case it gets, gets to that uh, point, but it won't. Um, <laughs> uh, did you guys ever work together in the same room? Peter and I got to work together in the same room, which is great. Okay. We kind of go to Denmark, but ne next time I'll have to figure out how to get Will there. <laughs> a lot of, lot of uh, late night uh, uh, FaceTimes in, uh, in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, wow. Be like, all right, so Will, if you wake up at 4 a.m., <laughs> then that will be... <laughs> or the other way around. Uh, yeah. Or the other way around. Oh, very long conversations, Four almost years. like jam yeah, sessions was... online. Yeah. The trickiest one I've ever done was I think I had somebody in, uh, definitely in New York City, somebody in LA, and a third person in New uh, Australia. Yeah. That was a, that was kind of tricky. Ooh. 
Wait. Because Australia does like the half hour thing too, huh? Doesn't it? Oh, it might. One of them does like it also is a half it's an hour and a half off or something like that. Oh, I I, I guess I've heard of that. Yeah. Well, anyway, they uh I I uh can't, you know, uh I endorse this movie. <laughs> I can't uh <laughs> And I, I really want people to go to see it. Is there what is the is there going to be another festival soon or? Yeah, next week we're at uh, I might oh. say it wrong, but it's Champ Champs Elise, Champs Elise. Uh, yeah, Champs Elise out in in Paris, which I'm very excited about. So, mm-hmm. That's great. great. So you're going to yeah. go to that one? Yeah, I'll be able to attend that. Oh, one. I get it now. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> um and you guys are you uh what are you doing uh peter in, in at the uh skywalker ranch uh i'm mixing a documentary called the territory which actually uh, premiered at sundance but national geographic bought it and now they're paying one of these at dolby atmos up mix to what's that? that we're doing a dolby atmos mix oh, so it's ready oh. for the cinema in august oh yeah. wow Okay, well, that's great that they got that opportunity. Maybe Apart from that, I then I just finished Evil Dead Rise, so oh, I also <laughs> just did a lot of really horrific, bloody, crazy action. So <laughs> I've been uh, I've been doing a bit of different that's, work lately. I'll say that kind of it's good. It keeps you sharp, I assume, and you know, <laughs> keeps things interesting to be working on such varied uh, projects. I mean, and and it shows kind of your openness as an as a as a sound designer as somebody who you know that you're you don't want to you're not narrow in your own you know that's also a thing about this collaboration is that i mean you can look at joseph chambers and the movie kind of takes elements from a lot of different genres in a way also sonically and musically right there's a lot of different kind of tricks and like mm-hmm. methods that i use them like every, everywhere from like uh, i guess all the way from monty python to like what, 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 <laughs> nice. what did you say? like what it's you... it's <laughs> funny funny look, oh when he breaks out into always look on the brighter yeah, side yeah, of... for example yeah yeah <laughs> that was it. Uh, and then like some really crazy horror elements in a way so oh, like Yes, we hard. have a lot of different stuff going on in this film, and I think that's also what gives it its unique character and unpredictable character. That there's never a point in this film where you really, I mean, where you know what's going to happen because yeah, it's no, and that's what makes it a comedy, by the way, too. Um, and I will say that I, I'm not going to bring it up as, literally. In other words, I'm not going to get into details about it. But for my favorite moment, it has to be. Uh, is it the, what's the main char- character's name again? I'm kidding. I I, I had a <laughs> moment earlier, but this time I know it's Joseph Chambers. But Joe is in the <laughs> and let's say he's already there's this incident uh, that 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 the film hinges on. Let's say right has occurred, and he goes back uh, with um, a tool to take care of something, and he and he's <laughs> he starts digging. <laughs> I just want to bring it up because it's funny. What's I just knew this what was going to happen, and it's just this really kind of amazingly comical moment. I mean, was that? I just have to ask as a last question. I mean, Robert, are are, are you just, you really put him in all these comical moments? And I just feel like it, with the sound design was almost like again this relationship between the comedy of the film and it's not a comedy. Yeah, but it's because of the sound design again. I just want to say that the, that these two things rub up against each other, create an incredible tension, which makes it kind of a horror film, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm really I, the that the balance of comedy and horror, I think, is something. I I mean, comedy is so hard. Exploring yeah. it, getting to explore it in this context was really important, and, and to be able to like emotionally you know have your audience just kind of on this roller coaster in many ways what was really important so yeah all these little these elements of comedy elements of laughter yeah. um very very important for the audience and, and for the storytelling aspects of this this 
guy who really again has you know kind of no business and the, and clean's willingness to go go for it too and that you know like to really throw himself into it like the whole fetal position scene i mean that that was that's gutsy right there you know yeah <laughs> well did you when you i i don't mean to kind of turn back to what we were talking about but i i just i this was occurring to me before though when you did watch it with you know no sound as design just did you think this is like a comedy what are we what are we looking at here what has he made <laughs> oh i mean <clears throat> I, you know, until the uh, end, of course. Yeah, until the end. I mean, honestly, I just, uh, um, I mean, I, I think what's so wonderful is like the first time I watched it, um, I took all of this kind of profundity of like, oh my gosh, it's like, you know, did this really even happen? <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, I, I'm watching it. Um, you know, I think uh, the, uh, the beauty of it, it's like, if you're just searching for like, okay, well, what's the meaning of it? It's like all of these little, you know, him getting so mad that he trips that he's just like, like, like bashing a root with uh, uh, a shovel because he or just like these moments of just like, right, frustration, rage, embarrassment, but he's alone in the way, you know, um, Honestly, it's like I, I I thought the whole thing was, you know, an allegory and, you know, a, a surrealist kind of um, experience. So to even really have it described in terms of like, oh, it's a story of, you know, some guy who's pretending to be a survivalist. My, my mind didn't really go there initially. I, I really took it as um, th that the 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 script, Klein's performance, the way that the cinematography just kind of gets ever more kind of claustrophobic as it goes on. It's just, it's all very surrealistic. And right. um, I, I walked I walked away almost feeling like it was like when he woke up in the tower, like it's Alice through the looking glass. Um, and it's, so <clears throat> my, my first kind of intuition, you know, as to like what kind of fodder to give Robert and Peter was like, what are the, 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 the things that false kind of false pattern recognition of where it's like you hear sounds in an environment and then it's suspension of disbelief. And that opens a portal to something uh, um, else. But yeah, no, I, I you know, the comedy uh, stuff, it was more like, man, as soon as we started popping sounds in you know peter's got such incredible timing the way that he played like he uh places just these little uh sonic events so it's like as soon as peter started kind of painting in there with somebody said then i was like i just would find myself laughing out loud or just like feeling really uh deeply emotional and sad mm, um yeah, you know yeah. I, and, and I see each it. time so I don't know, manifold kind of interpretations. And I, and I love it that it doesn't, um, yeah, uh, just enough unpredictability and instability in the way that it's like, if you were to just zoom across the, the film and like you landed in like 35 minutes in the film, you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck just happened <laughs> before this, to, that I'm in this sound world, this kind of tension, is it gonna release where, like, how is it gonna resolve? Like, Right, yes, totally. Well, thank you guys. The name of the film, again, The Integrity of Joseph Chambers, directed by Robert Troy. I'm going to say Soundscape. Is yeah. that corny? Nope. Collaborated by, right, Will Fritch and Peter Albertson. That's how I say it. the collaboration of you two guys created a soundscape there that really uh, is an enormous a component to the success of this, this movie. So congratulations, you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having us. Yeah, no, no. Let's get the word out to everybody. And again, you'll be at the, if you're in the neighborhood, if you're in Paris, you can go to the <laughs> Champs d'Elysees <laughs> Film Festival, you know. Uh, right? Is that, is it, you're, it's in Paris, right? Is that what you're yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm sure it'll be, are you going to try to do a lot of festivals? What is it? Or I hope so. I mean, I, I think, I think the theater is, is a really, really critical place for it. 
That's true. This um, is one way to get the film in theaters. And in festivals theater. really, really support that. And they really right. support good sound, which I really appreciate as well. And so I hope so. I hope it really does get an opportunity to play at a lot of festivals so that people can experience it that way. Well done. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll let you get on with your awesome. <laughs> your hey, evening. Thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate Anytime, it. Anytime. You bet. Of course. Thanks all so right. much. All right. We'll see you all. Nice meeting everybody. Thank you, Adam. Such yeah. a pleasure meeting you. Same here. Same here. Bye. 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 Bye.